if you want something, give it first. This is something I like to hold close to my heart because it really applies to everything in life. You know, if you want more money, get used to giving more to other people. If you want to receive more love, give more love. You want to receive more respect, give more respect. In this video in particular, I do want to share with you my thoughts around love specifically because I felt called to really make this video as I was observing the self-improvement space and just observing my own thoughts and my own behaviors and reflecting on the last couple of years. And I do believe that no matter what it is that we're setting in terms of goals, the things we want to accomplish, really what we're looking for is a sense or a feeling of feeling worthy, validated, loved, all of these different things that our soul deep down truly craves that we may not have gotten growing up or we may not have gotten somewhere else in our life. And that's truly what we're looking for on a deep, 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 deep level. And this can sometimes be triggering for people because when you say that, it's like, well, no, my conscious mind wants to you know, have the success and have the material things and all these things, which is absolutely fine. You own those desires. They are not bad. I'm not saying that at all. But deep, deep down, what we're truly looking for is a feeling. It's a feeling maybe of being significant, right? Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's a desire for love. It's a desire for acceptance, which is the human nature, which is absolutely 100% okay. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that at all. But we do have to remember that if that is the feeling that we're truly looking for, it would make sense to give it first. It would make sense to give it to ourselves first. Truly, it always starts with us, being able to give that to ourselves. So this is where the idea of self-improvement comes from. The way I interpret it is it's not really coming from a place of developing self-love. It's more coming from a place of building yourself into a new version of yourself, which I'm 100% there for. Absolutely love it. I think it is so important. But deep down, if we go a layer deeper, we're trying to generate self-love within ourselves. But that can come from a variety of different ways. And the biggest way that I found was going deep into the aspects of yourself that are maybe not accepted by you and owning them, you know, not trying to be somebody else, not trying to follow blindly the advice of others online in the hopes that their transformation is going to be your transformation because it's just not the case because in that process, you lose yourself, you lose the truth of who you are. And that is not the path of developing self-love. Developing self-love within yourself is really about First of all, loving yourself unconditionally, all the quirks, all the negative things, all the positive things, the strengths, the weaknesses, these different things that we have that can all be shaped and developed, by the way. So there's nothing set in stone and we can actually mold ourselves into someone completely new if we really want to. We're very, very malleable, which is amazing. But it's important to realize that there's certain quirks about you, there's certain gifts that you have, there's certain strengths that you have. There's also certain things that you're just not that great at. And that's okay. And developing that self-love within yourself starts within and accepting that first. Because if you're on this constant train of self-improvement, looking for the next way to improve yourself, it's a never-ending cycle. It's a never-ending hamster wheel. It's a grind where you don't arrive anywhere. You just keep striving for better and more when really, a lot of the time, not saying this is for you specifically, but for a lot of people, it can be a case of, I'm trying to find something outside of myself to make me feel the feeling of love within myself. That goes deep. So how do we really develop this, this love within ourselves? Well, we understand the things that we've went through in our life, the things in our life that may have happened to us, the things in our life that we feel a negative charge towards or negative energy towards, the things that may have happened to us growing up in life the things that other people said to us that made us think a certain way about ourselves. A lot of the time, it's just going deep into what those things are. And of course, this is a personal journey for all of us. I found that meditation is great for this, sitting there and allowing emotions to flow through you. This is something we don't do enough of as men specifically. And then from there, when you are allowing these emotions to flow through you when you're sitting with these things that have happened to you that hold a negative charge maybe there was a, 
a, a family member who did something to you. Maybe there was a, a moment in your childhood where you felt abandoned. And there's all of these things happen to all of us. We always feel them. And nobody's perfect, not even our parents, which means that there's always going to be things there that made us feel a certain way. And that's okay. We're not here to judge them. We're here to process this within ourselves, And that's all healable, if that's even a word. But it's all healable. Uh, I know because I've done it and it's been an incredible journey for me as well. I'm on this journey just as much as anybody else's. But allowing those things to, to come up within us, processing through them and then choosing in those moments to reclaim your power by remembering who you truly are. Remembering that you are a spiritual being incarnated in a physical body, right? You are not your hand. You say my hand. You say my leg. It's not you. Who is you? You is the being, the soul, the spirit within the physical body. And whatever you believe in, in terms of God or the creator or the universe, personally, I just call it source, source energy. I believe that all religions are the same thing, told in different ways for us to make sense of the stories around that. And I think some of it has been corrupted, but that's a story for another day. But when you truly ask the question of who am I, it is infinite. It is infinite who you are. If we are truly connected to source and source is the all and we are splinters of that, then that means to our core, we are infinite. We are perfect. Now, that doesn't mean that we don't strive for growth. We may seem imperfect to ourselves right now or sometimes when we reflect on our 3D world experience that we find ourselves in right now. This 3D world around us is us in a physical body. And when we're in a physical body, we're going to feel limited because we are not infinite energy our soul is within the body we came here to experience the darkness the limitation of the 3d world so that we could reclaim our power and transcend and reconnect with the one infinite creator at least that's what i believe I'm not trying to force my beliefs on you but that is my truth and the more i've leaned into that the more it's just deeply resonated with me and i started to remember more of who i truly am and the reason i mention this is because that love that we are trying to cultivate in the world and within ourselves comes from that connection that we have and that remembrance of who we truly are. And the world is not designed for you to feel like this. The world is designed to keep you in fear. The world is designed to keep you in survival and is up to us to transcend those levels of survival and rise up into more areas of love, responsibility, peace and joy so that we can truly experience life in a way that is not us chasing something outside of ourselves to feel a certain way whether that's a business an idea a partner anything chasing something to make us feel better about ourselves that's not the path but sometimes you have to walk that path to understand that it's not the path so don't judge yourself here and this is not me judging you because we are are all on our own unique path. So let that unfold the way it's meant to unfold. Don't change anything. Just let it unfold and be kind to yourself. You don't have to have it all figured out. Plenty of people out there will tell you that you do have to have it all figured out. You don't. Nobody has it all figured out. <laughs> Nobody. It's one of the biggest lessons I learned from a lot of the mentors I've invested in. They don't have it all figured out either. And some of them make a lot of money. Some of them are really experienced in certain things. Some of them are really skilled in other things. And they still don't have it all figured out. So don't feel like you need to either. Allow your path to unfold. But that path, if you can bring more love into your life, that path will get better. That path will get more fulfilling. That path will make more sense. I can honestly say that. So a couple of things that I do to cultivate more love when I'm just out and about in the world. For me personally, I held a lot of judgment before. Not so much now because I've been able to manage it using the, the process I'm going to share with you right now. But I was holding a lot of judgment towards other people. You know, I would walk down the street or I would sit somewhere or I would see people around and I would judge them. I would think that they're a certain way and I would cr criticize them in my mind about something specific that they were doing, whatever that case was. And I started to recognize it a couple of years ago. And what I found was that judgment came from judgment I was passing on myself. Because when I was sitting there judging other people, it was because I was judging myself. I wasn't allowing myself to be the way that I wanted to be and I would judge everybody else for doing what they're doing in the process. And when I started to dissolve that judgment, let go of that judgment, seeing someone do something and in those moments where I would get an inclination to judge them, I would instead just connect to my heart. 
I would see them just out there doing life as another being, as another person trying to figure out life just as much as I am. And I wouldn't hold any judgment towards them. I would try to dis dissolve it in that moment by reconnecting to my heart, allowing the energy that's flowing through when it, that comes with this judgment because the, these judgments, these emotions we feel, they're just energy in motion. We choose the direction of where that energy goes. So what we can do is actually, when we feel that immediate thought, or we get it and it comes to our mind, we can transmute that into love by just choosing. It doesn't have to be a complicated process. You just choose. You just set your intention, and that's how you can dissolve these things. And the more you get into the habit of doing that, the more you'll see that you feel free to do whatever you want because you've dissolved the judgment from other people, which means that you've dissolved the judgment within yourself. This was a key lesson for me, and it's been one of the biggest game changers. Another thing that's been really helpful is following your curiosities and allowing the things that excite you to excite you. Not feeling like you're weird or different or strange for following the things that you're curious about. Because the things that you're most excited about are going to be the things that make you, you. You're going to be excited to do them. It's not going to feel like work. I've designed everything that I do, at least as much as I possibly can right now, to be designed around the things that are exciting to me. So that nothing ever feels like work. Now that doesn't mean I don't work long hours. That doesn't mean that I don't have goals. That doesn't mean I don't have things I'm working towards. But it's not work the way we would see work. The grind, right? I don't see things that way. I don't want things to be that way. I choose differently. We don't always have to choose what the masses are telling us to do. You always have a choice. So if by following your curiosities, by following your excitement in every moment, you deeply connect yourself with your unique path in life. There's higher guidance out there coming from a higher version of you, a higher self. Call it God, call it source, whatever is true for you. There's guidance there that if you follow it, it will bring you everything that you want in life. But the problem is we try so hard to go against all of that because of the programming that we've received throughout our lives. Never thinking to question our, our beliefs, our thoughts, our ideas, because they all hold a specific frequency as well. They all hold a specific vibration, the same way we do, the same way the world does, the same way every human being does. So by following your excitement, your thoughts, beliefs, emotions, they start to shift over time because you're leaning into the things that are actually genuinely exciting for you. And sometimes that means that you pave a new way for yourself and that there's no person out there doing the exact thing that you're excited about. And you can learn from other people, of course. I would recommend to do that for sure. But being open and okay with the fact that paving a new way for yourself is going to be how you create something unique in the world, whatever that means for you. And as you allow yourself to live in that way, you develop more love in, of life in general and of yourself because you're doing things that you're excited about. You're, you're doing the work of dissolving these judgments and you're processing through these emotions and your life will dramatically change. A number of years ago, I couldn't even sit in a group of people. I couldn't, I couldn't go out for a meal by myself. I couldn't go up and really feel comfortable within my own skin t talking to people. And I, I, I just, I don't even recognize that guy. And it all came from doing the inner work, the self-mastery, everything that we talk about on this channel, which is why I'm so fired up about it. And I want to share with you because it's, it, it, it transcends anything that I've ever seen when it comes to traditional self-improvement, doing the reps and going to the gym and dating and things like that, which are kind of a, it's a funny topic to look at some of these things, but not that those things aren't important. They absolutely are. But there's a depth that is missing that if we can cultivate in our lives, we will actually achieve the things that we want to achieve. And I've seen this show up in small ways in my own life and in, in pretty big ways as well, which has just been incredible to see just to experience and just to have that reframe of what really is important cultivating that love within ourselves and as men specifically when we cultivate more love within ourselves we can give that to our woman or to our partner that is the masculinity that is needed in the world more loving men more men processing their emotions more men allowing themselves to feel emotions and not feeling judged for it but that starts with us not judging other men for it. Because when you're in a relationship, especially with a woman who is a feminine woman and you are a masculine man, your core is masculine, 
the only way for you to navigate that relationship and to truly cultivate the love in the relationship that you truly want is by loving that woman unconditionally because the primary concern for women is the flow of love in the relationship the primary desire for women is just love most women out there are just feeling unloved and it's a bit heartbreaking to see that because a lot of men out there are also feeling unloved and then we go off and we chase it in, in external things instead of developing the love within ourselves by becoming that guy not becoming that guy by doing more first of all is becoming that guy internally and then doing more from that place because obviously we want to work towards things purpose is a, is a is a big part of our lives specifically as men also women as well for some women specifically and by just listening to this video i hope this has brought awareness to you and where you're currently at how can you develop more love within yourself this could be spending some time doing exciting things throughout your week putting them in your schedule blocking time off and doing fun things that you want to do that you feel is something that you've been putting off for a long time how can you have more fun in life you know we get so so caught up with uh, all the doing all the things you got to do you get caught up in tasks and projects of course if those projects are exciting to you then 100 percent like go all in because that's not really work but if you find yourself getting caught up doing stuff that is like this is just this is just taking up time and then at the end of the day you have no time for yourself or anything like that put some time aside to really look at your schedule how can you build in things to bring more excitement into your life how can you plan more date nights with yourself how can you plan more date nights with your partner how can you plan more more time with friends how can you plan more time to do fun activities we're not here to grind until our eyes bleed right <laughs> like that we're here to develop unconditional love within ourselves and give that to the world because when you do that you spread it around to other people imagine if we lived in a world where unconditional love was the default emotion it would solve all the problems <laughs> it would change the way humanity is but that's not to say that we'd want to get rid of the darkness either because you have to have the darkness as well unfortunately it has to exist it's polarity there has to be darkness for there to be light but the more light that we have the better the world that we live in and that starts with us it starts with us it starts with developing that within ourselves processing those emotions allowing those things to flow through you and going back into your past understanding the things that made you feel unloved made you feel unworthy and healing those things bringing awareness to them sitting there with them maybe maybe it's just you thinking about it sitting in a meditation right with your eyes closed and just allowing that to come up and process through it maybe something that's been pushed down for many years allowing that to come to the surface so doing that dissolving things like judgment and you can do this with any emotion emotion as well by the way you can feel fear in any given moment and transmute it into love you always you can do it with everything and it's not like there's a specific crazy process around it you just need to consciously do it and bring awareness to that that's the biggest part it's just awareness to these things and then how can you do things that you're more excited about and really bring more joy into your life going after the things that you want to go after owning your desires so with all that being said as great as self-improvement truly is what we're really looking for is a deep love within our souls for ourselves so we can give that to the world that's the feeling and that's possible for everybody if we choose it if we choose it so always remember if you want something give it first how are you feeling what are your thoughts drop them in the comments below i would love to hear what's going through your mind sending you so much love i'll chat to you soon